First Minister John Owen Eno has assured that the federal government will start implementing the National Sports Industry Policy, NSIP, as part of President Bola Tinubu's Renewed Hope Agenda. The immediate past government of Muhammad Buhari approved the NSIP to provide opportunity for corporate and private sector participation in the development of sports in the country. But it was not able to implement it before the tenure of that administration elapsed. According to Eno, the current administration has endorsed the NSIP as both corporate and private sector play critical roles in sports sponsorship and infrastructure upgrade, adding that the policy has also provided opportunity for moving sports away from being mere recreation to a business. He added that one of the key policy objectives of the administration is that sports can be used as a source of unity, peace, and stability of the country. Job creation also, as well as providing opportunity for exclusivity in participation in sports by both males and females. Joining us now on the show to further discuss his vision for the development of sports in Nigeria is Senator John Owa Eno, Nigeria's Minister of Sports. Honorable Minister, thank you very much for joining us. Good morning. <laughs> Thank you, Ruben. Great man of right. Good morning. Malabait. <laughs> Good to have you on the program. Well, quickly. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Yes. Uh, the sports uh, industry policy. Well, this was uh, approved by the uh, Buhari administration in November last year. And now the uh, Tinubu administration is adopting it and you have uh, praised that policy. Uh, have you... Did you see any need to review some aspects of that policy? And what, if any, is the strategy for really implementing this to make sure that it's not just at the federal government level, that even states buy into it? Because it's uh, a policy uh, that talks more from the federal government perspective. Well, thank you. I mean, thank you, Ruben. And thank you, you know, the most of the team. It's, um I think the most important and urgent matter before our table now is to even begin the implementation of that policy. When you talk about states and then, you know, perhaps, you know, and all local governments, you know, there's always, you know, in place, the, um, there's always in place the National Council on Sports, you know, that has to do with, you know, the Minister of Sports Development and all the states commissioners of sports and you know as the case may be i know that meeting would normally one of the you know importance of that meeting is to be able to get states you know to be able to appreciate you know what the federal government is doing in terms of you know policies and implementation of policies and things like that for the ministry of sports development under my watch it's to begin the implementation of this policy. I mean, as the implementation proceeds and the ministry, you know, finds any need to review as the case may be, it will just go ahead. You know, that is because the problem of the sports sector hasn't just been in terms of the debt of policy. There have always been policies. I mean, policy documents, they date back, you know, to very far and the problem has been, you know, the will and the commitment by successive administrations to get the policies implemented. So I think that, you know, for the government that is ably led by our president, Asiraji Bola Metinubu, it, it wants to go right down and begin to do, do things different and, you know, get set to implement this policy and be able to get, you know, the benefits that that implementation would bring to the sports sector and therefore to the country as a whole. All right. Thank you, Senator Eno. Now, one of the things that has been done in the immediate is to set up, as you've mentioned, an interministerial committee to look at um, one of the things that we're looking at is incentives to attract the private sector to invest in sports in Nigeria. Beyond that as well, as part of this, is how to market sports 
to the private sector um, to get more to get more investment. How do you plan to do this? I know that obviously the committee is going to agree on some of the incentives, ways to market, but what are some of your ideas as minister to ensure that private sector were able to attract private sector investment in sports? Well, incidentally, you know, before, you know, even before I got on this seat as Minister of Sports Development, you know, the last administration, the, the, the interministerial committee had been set up by it and then had concluded its work and submitted a document that had to do with, you know, quite a normal series of incentives that, you know, government was supposed to sign on. The only thing it didn't do was that it didn't sign on that document before, you know, the exit of that administration. You know, so one of the things that, you know, needs to be done and for which I'm already engaging, you know, on the matter is to get, you know, those set of incentives that have to do with, I mean, different categories of investments and then different, um, you know, set of incentives, you know, to bolster, you know, the private sector. I mean, indicating, for example, that if you do X, Y, Z investments, you're going to get this number of incentives. You know, so that is, you know, I mean, I've gone, you know, to see, you know, the, the president, you know, Friday last week, and this was one of the things that I took, you know, to discuss with him. Uh, the permanent secretary who had, you know, sat on after the exit of the last administration and therefore the last minister of youths and sports had actually, you know, written, you know, to Mr. President on this subject matter. I, as minister, had also sent a reminder, you know, so, you know, the meeting with the president was a follow-up, you know, and I think that work is in progress to get that done. You know, after, after that is done, I think that it will be having to have an engagement with, you know, the private sector, with, you know, private sponsors, with, you know, companies and interest groups that, you know, have ordinarily been interested in funding and sponsoring different aspects of sports. But, you know, because of their experience and because of, you know, issues like the lack of trust and perhaps perceived lack of commitment on the part of government, they've had to hold back. You know, that engagement, I, say, I, I expect, for example, that after these incentives have been granted, it's not every industry player that is even familiar with what is in this policy and what and what needs to be implemented. It will be to sell this policy. It will be to you know, not just in terms of the industry players, but to also get, you know, Nigerians sensitized about this policy and about what the benefits are and about what and what the country stands to gain with everybody embracing this policy, with everybody, you know, doing what everybody should do for the sake of our sports industry and for the sake of our country. Uh, Honourable Minister, good to see you. Congrats on your appointment as Minister of Sports, and I wish you the best uh, during your. Yes, tenure. thank you. Uh, I'd like to ask you. Let's get thank down you so to much. That. Today, as we speak, our league is not on TV because I was hearing you talk about sponsorship and all of that. What can we do to ensure that our league one is on TV two? properly marketed. Because Honorable Minister, I have very glowing experiences of the days of Coca-Cola Challenge Cup in Nigeria, where this was a Challenge Cup that was shown on TV. I have glowing experiences of going to our stadiums, paying 50 Naira to go and watch 3SC. But today, our league is not on TV, they said they are showing it online. We don't even know what's going on. Our league, if it's properly harnessed, can be a multi-billion naira uh, spinning industry and employ thousands of people. What can we do? Let's start from our football league first before we talk about even other sports like athletics and the likes. Okay, we'll go for a quick break. We'll come back. We'll talk some more. We'll be right Welcome back to the morning show. We still have Senator John Owa Eno, Nigeria's Minister of Sport. So, as I was saying, sir, uh, good to have you back. I said, what are we going to do about this, our football league first? Because that's a gold mine if we properly market it. 
then before we talk about other sports, which we have myriads of them, you know, if we properly harness them. Even Nigeria is so blessed that we have participants that once went for a tournament in, 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 in winter sports. We remember the bobsleigh team from Nigeria that did so well. These are avenues we can cash in on. So let's start from our football league first. What's your thought about how we can market the football league? Get it on TV, get sponsor, more sponsors in and all of that. Get thinking around that. That's a, that's a body spinner. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I think that, you know, one month plus down the line as Minister of Sports Development, I believe that I've already started interrogating the issues, you know, that are affecting uh, football, you know, especially the, the, local, the local league. You know, before even marketing, although marketing is also going on, I mean, I give kudos to the present management of the national, you know, premier, you know, league, you know, committee, you know, led by, you know, my good friend. It, 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 it's, um, we started interrogating these issues because, I mean, you can, I'm sure, you know, some, some of you followed, you know, the fallout of um, Nigeria's exclusion when CAF, you know, invited about 85 in you know, number of referees in different categories, you know, center, assistant, you know, VAR referees, assistants, technical people, and out of 85, you didn't have one Nigerian. This wasn't the first time it was happening. It's happened about two, three times in the past. But I think that, you know, this also became the first time that we were confronting it. I didn't think Nigeria is a big, it's a big and enormous country. And if you find that kind of situation and you don't respond to it, I mean, so we started responding to it and I've had about two or three sessions, you know, and first, therefore, even to, you know, succeed in terms of marketing the local league. And I agree with you. It's huge. Nigeria's share size, you know, Nigeria's number, you know, the landscape, you know, the modern talents. You know, several years back, you know, we, we saw what the local league, you know, had developed into and we've lost all of that. You know, so, you know, one of the first things is to restore the credibility of the league. You know, it, it's, um, I'm bothered and concerned that in those days when we were in the university and in some other schools and all that, we looked forward to a Saturday where, especially in schools that were in capital cities, where, you know, matches were going to play, matches of the local league. Uh, I mean, we look forward to a weekend because we all wanted to troop to the stadium to go and watch. You know, these days, even when you find people go to the stadium, I remember we, I, I was in the stadium when Nigeria played its last match, you know, that the, the Cup of Nations match against Altome and Principe. The stadium was full, but that was also because the stadium was, you know, thrown open and people trooped in. I mean, I look forward to a period in which people on their own who get so interested in watching our local football league and on their own go to the stadium. Like I said, you need to restore back the credibility of that league. You need to get refereeing right. You need to, I mean, I heard of a match, people mustn't already know what the outcome is going to be, you know, well, that, that loses, it loses the, you know, the, 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 the attraction, you know, so a lot of these things we need to get done, you know, marketing key, you know, and there are a few, you know, at the moment, I think that some publicity is also being given. I remember when I challenged the committee, that I met with in the course of interrogating the matters about refereeing. The last two weekends, you know, pictures of, how, you know, the crowds in the stadium, you know, titled the crowds are coming back, were being sent to me. I don't think we are there yet. I think that a lot of work must continue. I mean, I look forward to a period, you know, in which, and at some point in the past, we've had people come from neighboring countries, you know, the sub-region and all that, come to our league, you know, so we need to, the, the ownership of clubs, you know, it's also something that, you know, we need to look out for. You know, my hope is that with the implementation of the national sports industry, you know, policy, with, you know, government's response appropriately, with the coming in of more and more players in the private sector, even clubs, local clubs ownership, will gradually gradually evolve and transit, you know, from, you know, government ownership 
you know, majority of our clubs are also owned by governments at different levels, state governments and all of that. I mean, one is not saying that government mustn't be interested, but I think that I look forward to a situation in which, you know, private people play a more, a more front and lead role in terms of club ownership, in terms of, I mean, and this ownership mustn't be 100%. I mean, the state governments must be willing to allow, you know, quite some share of club ownership. I mean, all of this is going to have the, 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 the effect of, of turning around the local league. I mean, I've also challenged NFF and I said to them, look, Nigerians are very excited about the national team. Anything about the national team, Nigerians want to watch, and Nigerians want to. But as you see, one of the things that is going to help our local league is that, I mean, I don't think that the present situation in which if the national team coach wants to invite you know, players to camp for a particular match, that if he's inviting 23, all 23 are foreign-based. I think that, although that too is going to depend on the quality of local league, I think I want a situation in which the foreign-based players compete for shirts, and shirts are not just as automatic and automatically available for them. And that if, you know, I mean, we played the, the friendly with Saudi Arabia the other day, and if you have one, two, three, four local players playing in that game, and they return and they are playing home, and they are playing, taking, participating in the local league, you know, because they have even made appearance in the national team, it becomes attractive for the football followership to want to go to the stadium. I mean, all of these things, there are a lot, there's a lot that needs to be done. And I think that the good thing is that there is the determination and there is the will to want to turn this around. And by the you know, grace of God, I think that we'll be able to get there. Well, the national sports industry policy is quite a bit voluminous, over 150 pages. And it has a lot. The main thing being, uh, you know, uh, promoting sports as business and encouraging the private sector. But if you were to look at most of those items, in terms of implementation, what are you likely to prioritize? Take, for example, the build, operate, and transfer of uh, sports facilities. We tried it. It has not worked with the National Stadium in Lagos. It has not worked with the MKO uh, Abiola st uh, Stadium. There's also something in that document that is called the Athletes uh, Welfare Fund. Every, every now and then, we hear that, oh, our athletes are suffering because uh, nobody is taking care of them, and so many other things, Sa tax rebates, uh, access to land for those who want to invest in that uh, sector. I'm sure you know, you, you, you know the details better. What will you prioritize? Well, you've mentioned examples of trying, you know, the bill of print and transfer, you know, as it relates to the National Stadium in Surure, Lagos, and the Mushur Abdullah Stadium, you know, where um, I'm presently seated, you know, where my office is. You know, not so much in terms of trying. i give you an example about the Lagos Stadium. You know, I met, you know, a concessional arrangement, you know, when I was appointed Minister of Sports that was, you know, ongoing. Um, I didn't think, for example, that the first thing I should do because of a new government and because I'm a new minister is to say no to that process. No. I think that, you know, in a session in Lagos, I had said, if that is what is going to be required to get the Lagos Stadium back to its lost glory, that I endorse it fully. You know, so what had been, what the last minister had done in terms of the Lagos Stadium was to encourage, you know, you know private people you know, with passion and interest. And for the case of the Lagos Stadium, you had, um, you, know, you know, Kensington at Debu too, you know, come in and restore some facilities, the electronics cupboard, the tartan tracks, the playing turf, you know. So it wasn't really a full bill of and transfer, you know, situation. The same thing with the Muchuda Biola Stadium, where, you know, the country was lucky to have, you know, Alajani Kudangute also take up some aspect of it. You know, in none of these has have we implemented really fully the the real essence of a PPP. Therefore, I don't think that you know we've tried it in the past and it has failed. I think that it, it seems to be the way to go. You know, especially with too much competing interest. You know, too many sectors crying for resources and for money from government. What it does appear is that the PPP and in its different forms and contents would be 
the focus, you know, in implementing the national sports, you know, industry policy. The athletes welfare that you're talking about, again, it boils down to available resources. Again, it boils down to, you know, so if, and for me, you know, beyond every other detail in that document, the key actually is what government needs to do to get back the private sector, to get the private sector interested. I mean, okay. Now, and I'm sure, you, I'm sure you saw the same thing that I saw last week, Friday, where the Guardian carried a lead story, cover page, that talked about what? Talked about the fact that the country's sports sector loses about 500 billion in yearly revenue because of lack of funding, because of lack of patronage. And, and I mean, sitting here for the short time that I've sat and getting to know the kinds of things that I've come face to face with, I think that that figure is even conservative. That figure is even more than that. Therefore, I think that getting the private sector to come in and part of the strategic plan you know, of the ministry, you know, Onamia's minister, is to look at the welfare of athletes. Because I've also been besieged. I mean, it's been, I've faced you know, quite some sorry situations with even the athletes we're talking about. You know, last, sometime last week, I received an audience, you know, the deaf football team that went to Malaysia for a competition. That would be the first time they would be in that competition. And, you know, I remained in touch with them while they were in Malaysia. And their situation was, was a sorry one. I mean, every now and then. So you must get challenged. If you sit on this seat and you're not challenged enough to try to do something more about the welfare of athletes, both those that are currently on and even those who have retired, you know, which will bring, give some kind of encouragement to the new and upcoming ones then I don't think that, you know, you'd have gotten it right. So a lot of these elements, if most of the things you've mentioned, you land for investment, you know, the ease, you know, all of that will come under the ease of doing business. That ease of doing business, you know, that the challenges and the problems about it, are not just limited to the sports sector. You know, but we're talking about the sector, you know, we are a minister, and therefore, I'm not going to dwell too much in terms of how much it affects other sectors of the national economy. You know, so all of these, you know, Maybe one of the things that has been lacking, I mean, I don't think, I'm not saying I'm the one that has it, I'm not sure it's exclusive, but I think it also has to do with, you know, commitment, you know, and passion. I mean, to want to make impact, you know, in terms of the different directions that you want to pursue these. You okay. know, so I, I, like no, to, no. I like to make a plea that the fact that certain things have failed in the past would not mean that they will fail now. And okay. that, you know, on we that all note, should be Minister, open enough you know, to expect that something different can happen. On that note, Minister, we would like to thank you very much, uh, Minister of Sports uh, of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.